Italy had just joined World War I, fueled by the ideals of Italian irredentism and the desire to claim the Italian majority provinces held within austro hungary they would join on the side of the Entente. The Entente believed that by opening a third front, they would be able to weaken austro hungary and as an extension make the Eastern Front more likely to break under the Russian Empire's pressure. They also believed among Italians that the war would be quick and that the Italians would be able to pressure Vienna within a matter of months. However, very few considered the actual border that was going to be opened, as the very mountainous terrain of northeastern Italy was not exactly perfect for an all-out offensive. And the beginning of this offensive would be the first four battles of Isonzo, which occurred around the Isonzo River. This video will cover these four battles that occurred in 1915 and what happened in each one of them. So, let's get right into it. Starting off with the first battle of Isonzo, which went from June 23rd to July 7th. Luigi Coderna had the idea of launching an offensive against the Austro-Hungarians, and it wasn't a horrible one. On paper, the Italians held a 2-1 numerical superiority against the Austro-Hungarian front, in both artillery and troop numbers. So, when he launches a full frontal assault, it wasn't really based out of insanity. However, the Austro-Hungarians would be able to hold by using the terrain, which was large mountains and hills where they would protect them with barbed wire. The majority of the fighting would occur in Gorizia, or outside Gorizia, where there was street-by-street -street combat as the Italians tried to take the city. However, they would ultimately not be able to in this battle. The final gains in the battle were very minimal, with Italy only taking the mountains near Bovec and the western parts of the Kras Plateau, while this gains would come at a massive casualty count of 15,000 casualties on the Italian front side and 10,000 casualties on the Austro-Hungarian side. 11 days later, the Italians would begin the Second Battle of Isonzo. Their plan largely didn't change, which was an all-out offensive. On a more individual level, Cardano believed that heavy artillery bombardment followed by infantry rushing forward and overcoming the enemy's barbed wire would be able to take the trenches the Austro-Hungarians had created. That would eventually end when both sides pretty much ran out of ammo around August 3rd. While there would be some continued skirmishes, the battle would largely end around then. The battle would see minor victories for the Italians, but nowhere near enough to account for the fact that 41.8 thousand Italians would die during this battle, and Austro-Hungary would lose 46.6 thousand. Around a month after the Second Battle of Isonzo, the Italian army now resupplied would begin the Third Battle of Isonzo, ranging from October 18th to November 4th. Coderna believed that the issue with his army was that there wasn't enough artillery, so he would increase the amount of artillery and try to continue the exact same plan as he had been doing. The Italians would attempt to bombard the entire Austro-Hungarian front with this increased artillery, presence, so the Austro-Hungarians would just take advantage of this and focus all of their firepower on one points or small points of the line, allowing them to break through and do massive amounts of damage to the Italian line. Coderna's plan would fail, and the Italians would largely lose this battle, resulting in a 67,000 casualties for the Italian front and 41,000 for the Austro-Hungarians, and yet another battle with very little movement on the front. The Fourth Battle of Isonzo is considered by some to be an extension of the previous battle, as it occurred only six days later, and ranged from November 10th to December 2nd, 1915. It, the battle consisted of the Italians launching a series of very bloody offensives that resulted in immense casualties, and the battle was largely indecisive as nothing really of any importance occurred. The battle would unofficially end due to the winter cold and both sides not being able to fight in it. This would be the last battle in 1915, as both sides would take an unofficial break for the winter. The Italians in this battle would take 49.5 thousand casualties, while the Austro-Hungarians took 32.1 thousand. Following this, there would be a long winter, and fighting would only resume in the 5th Battle of Isonzo on March 9th the following year which I will cover in the next video. The first four battles of Isonzo, or the 1915 offensive, was largely unsuccessful for Italy, and Italy was forced to realize that this war was not going to be one where they were going to be quickly marching up to Vienna. 
This would set the stage for the rest of the war for Italy, when they would resume conflict in the 5th Battle of Isonzo the next year. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, or at least learned something. I will try to keep this series weekly. I know I skipped the last week um, because of the new Vigor season, um, but I will do my best to make this a weekly series. If you have any cool facts you want to drop in the comments and you want to see appear in a video, I would love to hear them. And um, till then, it's been Christopher Reese, and I'll see you all next time.